My next challenge is you. My next challenge is to make a guide showing how to add custom sprites to a ROM hack using Lunar Magic. You can tell from the title that this specifically is going to be adding an Angry Sun with a Bowser and a Bowser on top of that. You can see the one Bowser shoots fire, the other one throws hammers. The Angry Sun, not very angry at the moment, but once you go over here and annoy him, he, uh, he moves. So as you can see, I've already made the hack, I've done it. What I'm going to do here is go through all my steps again, leave out the like 10 hour blocks where I was stumbling over things, take out all the wrong paths I went down and just show what actually worked. Um, so if you wanna follow along and use it as a guide, feel free. I do recommend watching it all first rather than follow along as I go because I don't always take the most efficient route at the beginning. Um, background in computer science would help, but is not necessary. And I think that's it. All right, so let's get started by getting rid of this. Let's start by making us a new folder. You're gonna need to start by getting yourself a copy of Super Mario World. SMC file is like the game. Um, apparently it's illegal to download these, so I'm not going to tell you where you can find a file that's specifically called this, but I feel like you can probably figure that out on your own. Um, what I'm going to actually do though, I'm going to start with this ROM instead. Ross Nelson kindly created um, a ROM with just one one in it because that's the level I want to start with. Actually, let me pause here and show you the requirements for this. Oh my God, guys, I had a great idea. Let's do everything. Are you interested in a collab? Are you interested in learning Ludo magic with me? So we can recreate one, 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 only one, one, but we're gonna put Bowser on top of an angry sun, on top of a Bowser. Like, how do you feel about that? And we're gonna call it Super Barb Word. So yeah, it's gonna be one one with the sun and a Bowser Bowser, as you've seen already. Ross Nelson provided the ROM with the one one and also provided a link to the angry sun sprite because why create it yourself if it's already been made? So here, Super Mario World Central, gonna be using this website a lot. Um, this is a download page for the sprite with the Angry Sun, essentially. Um, Pixie Tool is important. There's two options here, I think, only two. Either Pixie or Sprite Tool, we're gonna to be doing Pixie. Um, yeah, and it's just a download and it shows how it looks, which looks great. So we're gonna download that here, uh, here, and then unzip it into that folder. Angry Sun, extract all, extract, delete the zip. So let's analyze this folder for a second. We got cluster, which is an ASM assembler source code module. We got graphics, sprites, and this old. I don't know why they include their trash, so we're just gonna delete old. Um, and that's what we got remaining. So let's go into the graphics and look at the graphics essentially and see what they came up with. There's different versions, Super Mario Maker 2 Angry Sun or an SMB3, we want the SMB3 um, and we want to open this bin fold file. So to do that, we're going to use yychar. Don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but that's how I'm pronouncing it. This should also have a download button somewhere. Download file now. Uh, 
1.48EE5F7. If that code doesn't work for you, good luck. Um, we're going to extract that into our folder as well. And delete the zip. Okay, so this is an application. We open it. Looks like this. And now we're going to open one of those graphics folders, files. Let's go up, Angry Sun, graphics, SMB3, Angry Sun. So it looks like this, which is gibberish. And you have to go down to the graphics format and change it to three, is it four? Four, <laughs> awkward. Um, and right here is a sprite map. If you're not familiar with sprite maps, it's basically a file. It's got a bunch of pictures on it. And these pictures are how the game draws the images. So like if you had somebody walking, you'd need like each frame of him walking is going to be a different picture. And then the game puts them together. Um, as you can see, these are like spinies walking. The feet are different in these two. The colors don't work right, and that's because of like complicated palette things that, should I even bother trying to explain palettes? All right, the Google definition for a palette, the range of colors used by an artist in a particular picture. It's essentially that. Your palette is the colors that you use in the sprite. For some reason, they're not in the sprite. They're down here in like a, a controllable way. Um, I'm sure there's like a reason for that. I don't care. And it's not really important. What matters to us is, look, right here, this is an angry sun picture. So there's probably going to be the angry sun in there, which, I mean, we already expected to be in there, but it's good to know that we can see it. I put in my notes here to say notice that it's the O2 sprite map and say okay to that. But that doesn't really make sense yet, so I'll come back to that. Next, we're going to download Pixie. Pixie is what's going to allow us to insert the sprite into the ROM. So we'll download this from SMW Central as well. The way Pixie works here is your CF Pixie comes with this CFG editor. If you're getting flashbacks to college and thinking you're finally going to get to use your knowledge of context-free grammars, I'm going to disappoint you and say that it does not stand for that. Couldn't tell you what it does stand for, but why does this look like? But it's not context-free grammar. I think it might just be like configuration. But anyway, let's go back to the sprite that we downloaded and see that it came with assembly, your graphics, and this JSON file. Um, if you were to open this, which I'll do now, okay, this JSON file is basically just configurations. And if you notice in Pixie or in CFG editor, these are the same options. Um, so this is a graphical way you can say yes, 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 or you can go in here and say yes, yes, or no. Okay, sound good? So basically these are all the options for the sprite, like can you jump on the sun? Yes or no? Um, let's open this JSON file to see what they said. There I, I opened it, I imported it, and apparently you can jump on it. Yeah, there's some tweaking that we're going to have to do, but yeah, whatever. Basically, we don't need the CFG. I don't even know why I'm going into this. It's already been done with the JSON file, so we're just going to close this. Here's your JSON file. It looks fine. Let's just import it into this, the ROM using Pixie. To do that, we need to make another configuration file for Pixie. Um, List.txt, poorly named in my opinion. 
we're just gonna go with zero zero angry sun smb3.json. That's our configuration file. And that's it. Um, and then in the, well, let's see what happens when we try to run it. It's probably gonna say it doesn't like it. Okay, so I'll save that and close it. Open Pixie. Run anyway. It says it wants the ROM. So we're gonna actually put the ROM into the Pixie folder and then drag it into here. It's saying JSON file, angry sun SMP free JSON wasn't found. It's because we didn't move it into this folder. So we're gonna back up, grab it out of here. We'll get the ASM and the JSON. Come back down to Pixie, go into where it's said to go, sprites. Stick both of those there. Okay, let's see if this works. All sprites applied successfully. So what this did was it opened up our ROM file and added the code for this sprite, which I didn't look at the code yet, but there's a bunch of assembler code in here and it sort of added it into the ROM. So now we're gonna open up Lunar Magic I do have my screen zoomed in, so you can't see all of the window at once, but Lunar Magic is tiny, so I think it's like needed. So I apologize for that, but at the same time, we need it. So here's the ROM. Um, you can see down at the bottom, there's just Mario at the start of the level. If we were to go into sprite mode and then do add sprite and go zero, zero, F3, then you would see this angry sun is now here. Um, I didn't show you before, but obviously it wasn't here before. That's not in the base ROM. And then we can right click and add it to the game. You'll notice that this image does not look right. Um, that's intended by the person who created the sprite. Back when we were looking at the CFG, it showed that X. They just didn't bother making a picture for the Lunar Magic version. It's completely decoupled from the sun in the game. So it doesn't matter if it displays correctly or not here. Let's see what happens if we try to run it. Um, first hit save. And then you get... Not a copy of the original unmodified ROM with header. Uh, you need a header for your ROM. Blame Ross Nelson for that, but we're just gonna use that original file. Okay, that worked. Um, now, I saved it. Hit F4 to run it. And will it work? Leave a comment in the chat if you believe that this will work or not. And the answer is sort of. Um, there's definitely something here. Is it an angry sun? No. But, does it act like the angry sun? Yes. So, this tells us that the code is working correctly. It's just using the wrong sprites. Remember when I talked about a sprite map? Apparently the map is not correct. And the reason it's not correct is because we didn't do anything to add it. Um, in this game, you only get four different sprite maps you can use per level. Um, I showed you back when I had YY Char open. This is one of the four. Um, and there's this many. So there's like a limited number of how many different things you can have open because you're limited to four. 
what we need to do is insert this one that came with the sprite into the ROM. So you do that by clicking this. We're going to click Quick Extract GFX and also we're going to do Quick Extract XGFX. And what that did is back in the file or the folder that has the ROM, it created a graphics and X graphics folder. And in that, these are all of the sprite maps that were inside of the game already. And what we're going to do is replace one of them with the updated one that came with the ROM. So this, I said was O2. Um, and I said I would mention what that meant later. I'm going to do that now. Let's open up YYchar again. And now we're going to import or open the O2 one from the ROM. So we go into Pixie, Graphics, O2, GFX O2. They are ordered strangely. Change it to four. Okay. So on the left is the base 20, 02. I keep wanting to call it 20 from the game. We have some areas that it looks like they're just not used. And that's what this person who made the angry son decided like, oh, they're not using these. I'm just going to add my son parts here other parts up here. Didn't need all of that. Um, yeah. So since they decide to copy O2, I'm going to say, all right, let's copy O2. Let's delete this. We'll go into the Angry Sun download graphics. And we're going to just going to call this GFX O2. Cut that. Go into Pixie Graphics, go to GFX02, delete that, and paste in our new one. Then we go over to Lunar Magic and we say import quick insert. So this says like this extract went into the ROM, pulled out all of the sprite pages, put them in this folder. The insert is going to go to this folder, pull all of the sprite pages, put it into the ROM. So then we'll save and then we will go click this bad boy, enable this and replace one of our four that we can use. Zero and one seem to be important. There's things like Mario and the Goomba in there, but 20 we're going to replace with O2 and then hopefully the sun will work. I don't know how to find it there. O2. Okay. Let's save and hit F4. You do have to go through this annoying the beginning of the game every time. I think. I don't know how to avoid that. Uh, hopefully your ROM doesn't have this very long message to Fionor 809 because if it does, you're going to be reading it quite a few times. And there's the angry sun. And it works like the angry sun should. And it kills you if you touch it. Um, I did say in my notes here that I wanted to quick show what happens if we would put it into spray page 3 instead. So I'm going to put O2 here. I'll change this one back to 20. Save it. Run it. I didn't have to do the insert or anything because the graphics are in the ROM. It's just what one we're using. Okay. And it doesn't work correctly. Um, I'm assuming that these dragon guys on the left are in that page 20 that I showed. Um, 
So this sprite is always looking in sprite page four for its picture, not three. So we'll change it back to four. Whether you can change that or not, whether it's defined in code or I forgot what this was. We'll just put it to three. Um, I'm not sure. Come back later in the video and I might have remembered. Okay, so that was the bare basics of how you add a sprite and assuming everything goes right, that'll work. But probably what's gonna happen is you're gonna say, that's right, but it's not exactly right. And I wanna tweak something. Um, so the first thing I wanna tweak is this sun, as soon as it goes to the right, it starts going back to the left. That's not how it works in Mario Maker. Um, I'll put a clip in of how it looks in Mario Maker. But he does a pause between the left and right. Another thing is the it doesn't look as good when it, when it goes left and right. Like watch when I go left. It sort of like stays still, where that doesn't happen in Mario Maker either. Um, so let's go into the code and see if we can fix it so that he pauses. I want him to go to the right, pause, and then go to the left, not immediately go back and forth. Um, should be a small change, and it gets us started looking at the assembly code because we'll definitely be needing it later, I'm sure. So. The assembly code is, as mentioned earlier, part of what we downloaded and we added it in here, angrysun.asm. I'm going to open it in your editor of choice. Mine is apparently Visual Studio. Is this code or Visual Studio? Honestly, don't know. I think it's Visuals. I don't know. <laughs> what application am I using? I'm using Visual Studio Community Edition, which I believe the license allows me to use for this. Um, really does not matter what editor you use, just as long as you get highlighting. Okay, so the code itself is 630 lines long, but all of this is like graphics stuff. Let's scroll through it quickly, only looking at the paragraphs. Um, I don't know what they're called actually in assembly, but just like main main lines, like function names, whatever. These are things. This is more things. Attack left, attack right, waiting, set timer, save position, handle movement. So 200 lines in, we get to this movement. Animations, SME one or two, the moon, sparkles. Basically give points, spawn sparkles. We can ignore everything under line 200, which is good because that's two thirds of it. But kind of now need to understand what everything above it means. So this is where it's gonna help if you know assembly already. <laughs> um, I've never formally learned it, but have made changes at work to assembly modules, so I sort of know it. Regardless, I decided to, to follow this guide, Ursanio's ASM Tutorial Assembly for Super Mario Maker. Um, so I downloaded this bad boy to try to walk through it and see what there is to see. Let's just open the PDF. Okay. Um, you can just scroll through all this nonsense. Introduction to 65C816 assembly. That's apparently what it's called. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. 
I sort of skimmed through this. Um, I guess it's it's probably a good idea for you to read it as well if you've never done any of this. Did we get to the... Okay, we did get to Geiger's Snacks Debugger, um, which he recommended. Debugger, super useful. It allows you to stop the program and look at current values so you don't have to guess. Um, so I was very happy to see that because I don't get to use a debugger for assembly at work. However, when I downloaded Geiger's SNES debugger, let me see if I still have it. Okay, I can't find it. Uh, I don't want to download it again. When I downloaded it, it didn't work. I can't find it. Regardless, when I downloaded it, it wouldn't play. And I googled it and people were saying, yeah, I think it was um, C++ assembly was outdated or you needed an outdated one. I forgot. Um, and I saw this saying, we're going to be using a different one later. So I figured I'm not going to bother trying to get this to work. So I googled what debugger to use and I found BSNES Plus. And then I tried to run that and I couldn't get my controller to work. So I decided, you know what, we're just done with debuggers. I'm just going to do it the manual way. I'm going to look at the code. I'm going to look at a website like this. Well, exactly this once it loads. I'm going to look at a website like this and just figure it out. So what this is, is all of the keywords you can use for 65C86, um, the op codes um, for this language. So basically when you see STZ, what does STZ mean? You go here, you search for STZ, store zero is what STZ, LDY is load the Y register. So basically we're storing zero into the accumulator. Um, you, you get an accumulator, an X register, and a Y register. Registers you can think of as variables. So you get three variables to use. Um, and if you want to put zero in them, you can do it with these three commands. This kind of stuff, uh, I don't know how to read. Um, this tells you how many like cycles in your CPU the actual command uses, which is such a low level implementation. It probably mattered when they were making the game originally, but modern times, like it does not matter. If this one takes three cycles and this one takes seven, like this is super inefficient, right? But if this is easier to read, you're going with this all day, um, hopefully. You are, because they wouldn't have. Anyway, with that in hand, I started looking through all of the code. If you don't know assembly, here's a thread that you can use. It'll be the first link in the description, which I did not read this, but in the process of Googling a bunch of things, um, I came across this and I thought it was not a bad tutorial when I skimmed it. Um, so maybe that'll help. What I did was just stared at it. And I scrolled up and I scrolled down and I did more staring. And now I'm going to not summarize all of the code, but summarize the main parts that I think are um, transferable to you. Okay, three concepts I want to go over. First, um, this is from my own experience making games. Usually there's a main game engine and it's going to loop and do things every frame. The things are loop through all the sprites, um, take their velocity, add it to their current position to give you a new position. You're gonna then run collision checking to see if anything ran into anything. You're going to go into the sprite and call its process to say, hey, a frame passed, do you wanna do anything? It's gonna come back, it's going to, I guess, also red player input. Your game engine does all that. And when it goes into the sprite, that's what this code is going to be. It's 
the game engine's already determined, hey, this sprite, you exist, you're in this position, I know all these variables about you, do you wanna do anything? So that's the code we're looking at. You gotta understand that concept. Two is, two, there's essentially a bunch of global variables, but they're not variables, they're just specific memory addresses that are used as global variables. So let's get an example here, uh, 1401. So this is saying go to position 1401 in the memory and put a zero there. And what that's supposed to do is disable the left right scroll. So here's another link, it goes to this website. The memory map, you put 1401 in here and it tells you what this position in memory is used for, what that global variable is. And this says it increments one time, increments with one each time one of the left right buttons is pressed until the timer hits 10. So if you hold left or L or R, not left or right, but L or R, it increments somewhere else in the engine, increments the variable held in that memory location. Um, so by always setting it to zero, we're basically keeping it from ever getting to 10, which has the effect of disabling the left or right, because that left or right counter is a global variable that we're setting. Does that make sense? Maybe. Another example, let's find another example. Yeah, let's just do speed. Um, so B6 right here. We'll just go with the ones that are commented. Store a zero into B6. B6 is the sprite's X acceleration. Um, and then we're going to lo load C0 into the accumulator and then store the accumulator in AA. So first, what's AA? We go here, AA. And we get the sprite's Y and then C0 is hex. So if we turn in programmer mode in the calculator and we put in C0, we see that the decimal value for that is 192, which is a huge number and immediately made me think that I made a mistake, but apparently that's how big of a number you put in there. Um, yeah, so what this does was just set it so that it would, the next frame, the game engine is going to see that big value in the Y speed and move it down and not over. Um, yeah, so 2.5, I am going to mention this right here. If you were making a game and you needed to have a bunch of sprites, you would have like an array of sprites, some type of list object and then you iterate through each list, and then each sprite is like a class with its own set of variables. That makes sense? Probably not if you're not familiar with programming, but hopefully it does. Um, the way it works in Super Mario World is instead of a list of, and each item in the list has variables, you have a list of variables. So B6, is not a x speed, it's an array of 12 x speeds. So, so x is essentially your index into that array. So c2 is, again, anything with a comma x is working the same way where you can have 12 sprites at once in the game. My sprite is gonna be one of them and then this is saying, look at this index in the X speed array and set it to zero. And then go to that same index in the Y speed array and set it to C zero. As opposed to saying, I'm sprite six in the sprite array and then I have a speed. It's all of the variables are individual arrays. Don't know if that made sense or not. It took me a while to understand the concept. That's the way I would explain it. We're on to the last thing is just that all games or all internal code here is also gonna have some type of loop and it's right here. 
um, this jump W, I don't know what this W means. I couldn't find it, but essentially you're saying jump to the right pointer and then run that code. Uh, I don't know how I eventually figured it out. I also decided that C2 is the index that keeps track of which one of these you go to. Uh, let's look at C2. I think it was just random memory. Some of these global variables are not used. Yeah, just a miscellaneous table. So again, there's 12 bytes. Every sprite can use its own C2. In Super Mario World, it's commonly used as a pointer to different parts of a sprite. Um, so essentially, if you go into all of these paragraphs, they all, at some point right here, put a value in C2. And that value is going to determine which method you call next. So if you want to, so this wait, let's look at wait. So load X 15 E nine is your index in the sprite table. So that allows you to do comma X because you loaded your index. JSR, I don't actually know what JSR does. It's obviously a jump. Jump to subroutine. I guess it comes back. Um, load X, it does whatever's in update speed, comes back. Loads 1B into the accumulator, compares it to the screen number. Break. Load 16E into A. Break. Load A. Store A into C2. Don't know what any of that does. Um, the important thing to know is that sometimes it does break and sometimes it loads 4 into C2. So essentially, this will loop until it hits this code. Then it updated C2. The next time the game runs, it's not going to do this. It's going to go into attack right. Don't have to look at wait anymore. Don't have to look at any of this. Attack right. Let's see what it does. Load 1540 into the accumulator. You got to go back and look at what 1540 is. Miscellaneous, it's used by anything. Uh, didn't write down what it was, did I? Oh, let me go back. 1540 is a good one. It miscellaneous and it decrements itself once per frame. So if you say, I want my sprite to do something every 10 frames, you stick a 10 in 1540 and then the game engine next frame is going to update that to be nine next frame to be eight. So all your code does is the one part, you stick a 10 in there, and then later on, you're checking to see if it's zero yet. That allows your code to wait for 10 frames. So this is doing something similar with your attack, right? It's loading 1540 and it says branch, branch if not equal. Um, I don't know what that, that somehow is able to check if it's zero, maybe because load A sets the, what's it called, flag? Load accumulator, and then we come back, Z flag is zero. I don't know, this is where assembly like becomes the worst. Uh, this checks if it's zero equal because BNE checks some like internal flag that's set by something else. Let's see if I can come up with a understandable thing. B and E branches if the Z flag is zero. And what we were just looking at with the LDA had something about the LDA goes to zero if the something byte is something else. The Z flag is one when the result is zero and zero when the result's non-zero. So not at all the way I would do it, but you just know that clearly when you load this value into the accumulator, if it was zero, then a side effect of that is that the Z flag would be one 
and if you check it, it's just assembly nonsense um, that saved one line at the cost of being confusing. But essentially, that's just waiting for the timer to go down. Once it does go all the way down, we increment C so that this attack right doesn't get called next time, next time we go here. And then we're also going to set this timer. So, um, what do I want to say? At this point, I was looking through all the code and I was like, all right, so where do I just shove timer? They talked about timers. It seemed like there was no timer. I wanted to just try incrementing. I was hoping somewhere I'd see, let's populate 1540. Let me actually go there. Where do we, here, we store the accumulator in 1540. Can I just add value there and make it wait longer? And I decided, you know what, this is not working. I'm gonna ignore their code and I'm just gonna add my own weights. Now, let me, I feel like I rambled way too long for all of that. So let's just jump to the final solution, shall we? So here we have this attack right and then it does this waiting and attack left. What did I decided? We just need to add some chilling and some chilling out. So create a chill, which is going to set our timer. Chill out is sort of like out as in the break out, whereas the chill was the break in. Before we move left, we're gonna wait for our timer. And then before we start over, we're gonna wait for our timer. We're just gonna chill. Now let's go down and add this in the code. It doesn't really matter where, but I put it in the same order um, that it was in, I think. We're gonna load our index and we're gonna increment C2 immediately because we're only gonna execute this once. And then we're gonna just store 6C into A. 6C, if you recall, is 40, am I doing this? Okay, that's not right. <laughs> 6C is 108. Um, the game runs at 60 frames per second. 20, 30 frames? I don't know. That's like some amount of time. Oh, set timer to 60. It's 3C. 6C, I guess I doubled it, but like didn't double it because it's still a C. At some point I thought that... Um, 60 would be long enough, but I decided to up it. So we'll, we'll just change that to 102, 108. Sure. We're going to just store a number in 1540, let the game increment it for us. And then our chill out, we're gonna load X to get our index. We're gonna load 1540, do that same nice trick to say, is it zero yet? If it is, then you're just gonna, re or if it's not, then you just return. If it is zero, then we're gonna increment C2 so that it doesn't come back, as well as do this gibberish. So what this gibberish does, I don't remember, but it initializes 1540 with some random variable. Um, yeah, I wish I could be more helpful here, but sometimes the answer is just, I don't know, it just worked. Um, since you're not gonna be making the same adjustments to the angry sun, you don't really need to know what this does. Therefore, it's not that big of a loss if I don't know what it does, but that's our paragraph. Um, this code gets called each time here the same for the left or right, it doesn't matter. It's still one set of code and it should work. So we're gonna save that. Since we saved the assembly, we do need to use Pixie again. So we updated the assembler, which means we need to re-import it. And that's been done. And then we go into Lunar Magic and now we need to open up the new ROM because the ROM has changed. This is not the right one. And then we'll run this. All right, it's swinging to the right. It's 
waiting, waiting, and now it's swinging to the left. And waiting. So that is exactly how I wanted it. The pause in the middle, still kind of gross looking, but I'm gonna leave it because it's not really a problem if this is gross looking. Dude, it is so frustrating. And it is like not fun straight and it's frustrating. It's like the sign to make you feel miserable. I, I could tell you where I'd need to look if I wanted to fix it, but let's just move on to the next one, right? We got the sun, now we need a Bowser. Bigger. I came up with the following proof of concept pictures for the Bowser. Um, sent it to my product owner who approved of it. Yes. That is what I want. It is, it is beautiful. And then went to see, hey, did somebody already make a Bowser too? Because that would be helpful. So I went here, Super Mario World sprites, put in Bowser. And found this right here, Cluster Fire Bowser statue. Where this person made, I guess, Bowser statues that can shoot. You can do a lot of them. You can do ones that jump. This looked good to me. I guess the Bowser statues like in the default game. I'm not sure which of these capabilities they added versus what they had, but this looked good. So, you know the drill, right? We verify that it's Pixie and then we download it. And essentially the only change we need to make for this is to stick it on top of the sun. Um, you'll notice that this one uses X graphics instead of graphics, but it also has the cluster and sprite, ASM and JSON. So similar to what we were looking at before, and we already know what to do, right? We take the X graphics, this right here, it does say sprite page three, which was not planned, just like super good luck that the one sprite was set up for four and the other was set up for three. So we'll change that to just be called 80, stick it in, in Pixie, in X graphics. There was nothing there. Now there's something. Cluster, we're gonna take the cluster fire actually. We didn't with the moon or the sun but we are gonna stick that Bowser Fire ASM in the cluster here. And then we'll take the Bowser statue, ASM and JSON and stick it here. And then we'll update the list to say, hey, I also wanna import the Bowser statue. And then since we have cluster, bowserfire.ism. Um, the format for this, pixie list.txt, I don't know, I found it somewhere. It's like not great in my opinion, but we, we don't need to criticize it. So this essentially tells pixie, hey, go read this Bowser statue JSON. And I should have pointed out before, but this has the link to Bowser statue ASM. That's how they're linked together. Um, yep, this one looks different, which I thought was interesting. Both the, the indenting you can explain away, but these are like in different order, which to me means either someone manually created one of these or Pixie slash CFG went through an update, which changed the order of them. And both of those are like bizarre to me. So I'm curious which one's the truth. And I think it's, maybe there's another explanation. I don't know, maybe somebody ran a sword on one, but it doesn't matter, but it's also very odd. Um, looking at this, there is this map 16 difference, which the angry sun, I was very confused about. Everything on the internet was saying I needed a map 16 file to import the graphics and it didn't have one. And I was like, what the heck? And then this finally had one, 
which this looks to be some base 64 encoded nonsense maybe this is instead of the file they just encoded it and imported it here don't know um i think i had something to set, explain about that but i don't know it's not important so we'll just move on shall we with our sprite okay extra byte changes detected could not tell you what that means but it said no problem now we'll open it go into sprite mode add a sprite and then right here under the angry sun there is bowser gibberish except the images don't work right again so let's go in here actually and say quick insert x graphics so the extended graphics are essentially from what i was able to learn um here's your regular graphics you have 33 well hex 33 so i guess 52 there's only 52 of them and that's the max you can only have four per level and you can only have 52 total and extended basically extends that and say you know what you can have an inf infinite total we'll keep the four per level but you can make a hell of a lot more if you need it um i don't know if it's actually infinite it's probably not but it's a lot more than that so we've added that 80 we're now going to insert it into the rom and now we're going to change sprite page three to say just use 80 should be at the bottom of the list fff is apparently the highest so not infinite but still a pretty big number so as soon as we imported that actually if we look at this wizard right there our bowser statues look correct um, we want the stationary that shoots fire we will be changing it so that it's not stationary but might as well start with an easy one. So I'm just gonna stick it there and we'll run it. Um, expecting it to just fall down on Mario's head. It did have a note here I was gonna show loading it in spray page four and show the messed up graphics, but you've already seen that with the angry sun. So just know that if I'd put that in spray page four and said it wouldn't have worked. And there we go. Our Bowser falls and he shoots. Apparently Goombas can go through him and apparently Mario can stand on him. Which we will need to be changing later. And the fireballs kill Mario. So, statue's good. I wanted to talk about the bit field next. So let's open up the Bowser ASM. Right here, we have some some nonsense essentially um you can add this right here extra property byte for the angry sun also had an extra property byte and it indicates what screen it starts attacking from you set it in this json file pixie puts it into the ram and then when you're actually looking at the assembly code you can access memory position 7f ab28 and get that value so it's sort of like a configuration you can pass in um, for this sprite it lets you control four different behaviors with this one byte so we want to be able to say the statue type is it stationary jumping shooting fire the initial direction is it facing left or right is it jumping towards the player or away from the player? Um, H is, can you stand on it or should it kill you when you stand on it? And P is, I guess, what color should it be? So the way this works is you give it one number in decimal, say we give it 50. Well, say we give it 52, then the program's going to look at the binary of this and say 00110100. And it's going to line up with this. So TT is these the first two bytes 
first two bits, 0, 0 is equal to 0, it says it's stationary. The next two bits is 1, 1. 1, 1 in binary is a 3, which would be this, which says jump away from the player. Um, and then H is, the next bit is either 0 or 1, and it's this. So this is like, I don't know, interesting to me. On the one hand, so complicated and convoluted, but on the other hand, kind of straightforward once you understand what it is. <laughs> anyway, what do we want? We want it to shoot fire, and we want it to face right, at the start because the sun's going to be on the left and we do want it to hit you to kill you so let's look at the the current value was what uh, 81 let's put in 81 here and we get 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 what we want is 01001001, which is only slightly different. We need to subtract 16 and add 8 to 81. And that gives us 01001001. 73. So instead of 81, we want to put a 73 in here. Straightforward, right? Uh, I'll put in some overlays to explain that, but I mean, it's either going to make sense or not. Let's insert that into Pixie again, see what happens. It's still facing left. So, yeah, let me try deleting it and re adding it. It's odd to me that I need to delete it and re add it because why is the old stuff? stuff still there I mean I don't know <laughs> it just it's odd to me but if the insert wizard only has those four options they should be the ones related to what pixie has I don't know I don't know all I did was delete it re-added it and now you can spin jump off of it but you can't land on it so that's what we wanted now what we need is for it to sit on top of the sun. So let's go into the assembly for the Bowser statue and see what we're dealing with. First, a bunch of variables. I don't know what this is, this exclamation mark variable. Um, it doesn't show up in this anywhere, so I don't know what this is. I didn't use any, but maybe that guide would have explained it. Um, I do like the code better here. It's more straightforward, I think. It's better commented. Anyway, the first thing we do, we're going to get into this main, run the states. Before we run the states, let's just do it um, right here. Before we run the states, let's just, let's just, how many times have I said let's just right now? Let's put this code. We're going to how this is not what AA is Y speed. Let's just store zero into AA. I don't know what any of that. I don't know why I did that. Um, this will make it float. Because the game engine is going to apply gravity and say, hey, we need to make you fall. I'm going to set the Y speed. The next, But then this zeroes it out. Next frame comes along and it says adjust all of the positions by the speed. So the end result is it should just float in midair. And that's what it does. It And it's stationary, so it's it stays in midair. Okay, so that's that's how you stick it in one spot, but we want to stick it onto the sun instead. So I came up with three ideas on how to do this. The root idea is the angry sun is moving. I just want to copy those X and Y positions 
adjust the Y so that it's above the sun, but other than that, just copy it. Every frame say, stand on top of the sun. So in that X position array, one index, the index for the sun, has the right value. What I need to just do is read that correct index. Rather than the statue's index, I need to read the sun's index. So how do I find the sun's index? Those are my three options. One, in one of those random variables, I save a flag, and then inside the statue code, I read that, look for the flag, grab the index. Two, I look for the sun's tile map, and I use that as the random flag. Um, because the tile map should be, is the tile map zero? All right, I don't know where this tile map came from. We'll just ignore number two. Um, option three was just hard code the index because I'm only making one level. So obviously, let's go with option three first because that's the jankiest approach. And say, I added the sun and then I added the Bowser statue. So theoretically, the sun should just be one less than the statue, right? I think by default, the X register has your index in it. So we're going to just transfer X to Y. So now Y register has the same index. And then we're going to decrease Y by one. And then we're going to load E4 from Y into the accumulator and then store the accumulator into E4 of X. And this should copy E4, which is the X position from the sun into the statue. So we'll run that instead. But it is moving and it is apparently stuck to the Goomba instead of the sun. So um, they're not in the order that you place them into the level in the internal sprite table. Maybe they're in the opposite order. I don't know. That's not necessarily a surprise because I wouldn't know what to expect. Um, the options here are instead of decreasing, we increase or we decrease twice. You know, we just, we just keep looking for it. I'm going to increase because a, that's the first thing I did, and B, I know that that's the right answer because I've already done it. So now when we load it, it should follow. Um, I wanted the sun that immediately switches back and forth that wasn't working when I was messing around with the extra bite. I did want that in position now. I guess this is fine. Um, so it does follow the sun, as you can see. The sun's staying in one spot, and and the statue's right under it. It messes up here, not because the sun moved, but because we went to the next page. And that's why I wanted to get the sun moving immediately to demonstrate that. So let me adjust the sun and show you this. Okay, this was the first of hopefully not too many times when I messed up my recording in OBS. So I lost the next clip of what I did. But essentially I fixed the extra byte in the sun's JSON file so that it would immediately start going left and right. I then set both the X and Y coordinate of the statue to match the sun and it went back and forth with the sun perfectly. Um, I then jumped around and landed on the statue and it just killed Mario. Or I think he stood on it. I don't know. Nothing exciting happened. And then I was like, what the heck? So then I showed this video that I'll put over here of what happened the first time I was building this hack. Um, as soon as he died, like everything glitched out and it looked interesting. So 
I have no idea what caused that. I don't remember what I did to fix it. Um, it just went away and it didn't happen the second time I was building it. So um, I just been sharing that for fun. And now let's get back to... Oh, hey, it's me again. Um, so I actually lost more footage than I thought. After I synced them up, I noticed that the Bowser statue was offset. Um, and it, I wanted to just move the statue a couple pixels to the right as well as above the sun. Seems simple enough, right? We already copied the values. Now I just want to add and subtract to them. The issue is that Lunar Magic or uh, Super Mario World, I don't know which one or the difference, um, has these things called screens or like pages where this is one screen. If you go over in the hack, there's another screen, another screen. And there's actually two X positions and two Y positions. One of them relates to what screen you're on and one of them is your position within the reference of that screen. So if the sun is right here and the Bowser's right here, a couple pixels over, they're actually on different screens and that second X position x variable needs to change and actually the first one needs to change as well because you're at the beginning of this not the end of this right so this would be a low value that's a high value um, since they are two byte fields once you get to 255 you're full obviously if mario runs all the way across the level you can't do that and stay within 255 so that led me down this journey of trying to figure out how you do the math for these two fields um, is very complicated considering I can't look at them uh, I think hold on yeah I think this is when I went into talking about the debugger if not I'll take this out because it's with the second Bowser but I essentially used the debug I look I used the debugger to figure out that it was because of the screen boundary values were wrong i googled like crazy i eventually found this post by thomas who's a legend um, who gave this formula i then came up with a similar formula because this was slightly different um, and it worked or so i thought because with the second bowser i found out that that was still wrong somehow so i'm not going to go into what I had even though it worked it's technically wrong and it doesn't always work so let's not talk about it just know that I came up with code that I felt like properly was working at the time and decided let's move on to the next Bowser did this make any sense I don't know we're an hour into the video is anyone still watching probably not but this is so much more straightforward than what I actually went through so I don't feel too bad about it. Anyway, now back to me. Okay, um, maybe that 14 was a little high. So now the, the Bowser is adjusted with the X position as well. I just did the same thing, but using the X instead of the Y variables, and I added seven instead of subtracting 14. And now it appears to work, let's go to a screen boundary like here and we see it still works fine um, the statue glitches out a little bit because it has interaction with other objects on and the engine's trying to not have it clip into blocks and stuff um, but the screen wrapping works so at that point I was like sweet everything is good to go spoilers this code is not correct um, even though it looks like it was working right, it's not. And we will come back to that later. What's next? Bowser always looks to the right. I want him to flip-flop. And if you remembered in... Ugh, I should have the link. In the preview for the sprite, it showed... I think it was in the jumping ones... In one of these, it showed the ability for Bowser to jump towards you. 
Yeah, there you go. See how he changes direction to face you? That's what I want. I want him to change direction to face you. So let's look at the code, see if we can find where he faces you. Um, always good to just go with looking for the word face. Always a good play. Make statue face slash jump in the appropriate direction. Okay, so let's pretend I didn't control F for face because my note said explain the jumpy jump line instead, jump stuff. Um, so I guess we're going to do that instead. Let's load 1588. What's 1588? Oh, that's just your index. Um, okay. And we'll end it with three. Uh, what? Load B6 and OR it to F and then increment it. So that flips, like it says, flips the X speed. 15, load to 1570C, OR it with one. So this flips the direction. 157C. Uh, this was, uh, I'm, part of me wants to adhere to my notes. Part of me says, hey, you no wrote these notes when you were super confused. So is this really a good idea? Miscellaneous sprite table, it's often used as the horizontal sprite direction. Okay. So it doesn't actually flip it. It just says save the direction. No, it actually flips it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's all about that 157C. This is similar. We're storing accumulator in 1570C. The reason I didn't want to do this was the accumulator was populated in this sub horizon position, which is, I believe, a function that Pixie inserts. And I didn't really, I don't know how to use it or anything like that. Um, that was just what Google told me was that that transfer Y to A. So it populates Y and then we're we're restoring it there. Um, anyway, here's the code that I came up with, which again, I'm questioning what on earth I was thinking. So you rep 20 and take one A, which is the screen position and add 70 to it. So that's the middle of the screen and then compare it to E4, which is the X position and if they're not equal, then just go to continue, which is just here. And if they are equal, then or one into 157C. So we're basically saying, is the statue in the middle of the screen? If so, then make him change direction. Um, if he's at that specific pixel. So. Um, it didn't work. And I think the reason why, okay, I don't, I don't know why it's not working, um, but just put yourself in my shoes. Back when I was doing this, I got to this point where now the Bowser would change direction in the middle of the screen, always facing forward. Um, the next step is to add another Bowser because that's really all we want out of that Bowser. Um, this code does get replaced. So that's why I'm gonna just for now, We'll pretend it works and move on knowing that um, that it, it works later. I'll show you when I have good code. So adding the second Bowser, what do we have to do to accomplish that? Our list.txt file, we're going to need to add another Bowser. Bowser2.json and he's also well, you know he's going to be throwing hammers, but we'll assume he'll do to some type of something. Um, actually, let's just let's remove that for now. Let's just say Bowser2.json. So then we go into our sprite folder. Bowser2.json. What's it statue to? It was probably statue two, right? Nope, just Bowser two. 
this name does have to match. In here, we're going to leave all this the same. So it's going to be pointing at the code, the same code. Yeah, let's just make it the same code for now. We have ASM behind it. We have our CFG JSON configuration. What we don't have is the graphics. So in our X graphics, let's open this up in YYchar. And let's go here and we'll just scribble over this. Let's do it in again. I don't know how to use this application. Here we go. We're not going to use this big spike thing. So we're going to scribble over it and say, you know what? That's going to be our graphic. Um, obviously, in the future, I'm going to have to draw a Bowser, which is intimidating. But for right now, that's good enough. And we'll save that. Overwrite it too small. Expand the file. No, I'm going to say. Because when I said yes, it broke everything. So we didn't. We lost some data. But, I mean, it looks fine to me. So. That's our updated graphics. If we do open the CFG editor, JSON file, the graphics, we're gonna load in graphics 80. Hello? Okay, I don't know if you actually do it like that. Apparently not. Graphics 80. And now we're gonna attempt to look at this. Um, this window is incredibly small. But somewhere along here, there should be our graphics, where you should get to see both the Bowser statue and the spike. I think it's this. This. Let's delete this and say insert this. I think that this is my squiggles, squiggly spike. Um, remember I said the graphics were messed up, so it's not the right color. I was apparently painting in orange and it's like not the right position, but I'm pretty sure that that's the squiggly spike. So let's just save this, load it into Lunar Magic. Let's insert the graphics again because we updated them. And then, oh, I guess I got to run Pixie first. Open the updated ROM, insert the graphics, go to the insert sprite tab. And we do have Bowser 2 statue that looks how I made it look. Um, so that's what that, that panel in CFG editor is just for this view. Remember how I said they're disconnected from the code that shows the actual Bowser? massive. Uh, we'll delete this one and we'll save it and run. What I'm expecting to see is the exact same Bowser statue that was there before because all of the code is what it should do and how it should look in the game. That's all written in that ASM code. Um, the CFG editor view was just to get it to look right on there. So that's exactly what we see, Bowser. This is now my Bowser 2 statue that's running. Um, it actually, oh, actually, let me close this. Now it's time to look through this code to figure out how it gets populated picture-wise. It's got to grab the, the right palette, the right pixels from the graphics and display them. And it does all that in this thing called an OAM table. This is under the graphics section. We're moving something to 300. We're moving something to 303 and to 301. It gets offsets and positions. And there's something called a tile map in here. 
no, that's something else. 302 is the tile map. 303 is the properties. 42 in hex is the fourth row. Why did I put that? Statue head. Right here is the tile number for the statue's head. Oh, I did go into this, didn't I? Okay, um, I'm gonna make a copy of this code. And we'll call it bowser2.asm. We'll go into the JSON and we'll say use bowser2.asm. And then we'll open it. And then we'll open it. And we'll see this right here, statue head. This tile is a, a super variable. It's kind of like a struct, I guess, where it's got multiple variables in a row. The same thing here where it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like a six byte variable essentially. Um, and I imagine that tiles gets, yeah, so you load A with tiles and then store it in 302. 302 is the tile map. This is like a global, just everyone knows the tile map goes in 302. So if we change this to point to our sprite in, I should, should have left YYHR open. That's what this is saying, is saying right here, let's see how many of these I can get on screen at once. Um, somewhere we said to use sprite page three. I forget where that is, I'm not gonna bother showing it. And now we're saying, and the actual tiles to use is 30, 41, 35, and 56. That's relative to this sprite page. So how do you get the tile head is 30? Well, from my guess is that the 30 in hex, because we're all on hex. Yeah, okay. 30 in hex is 48 in decimal, um, which is three times 16. And how's this three is your next question? One, two, three, plus one. Um, is that might how it be it works. The first square right here is zero and then it goes all the way out to 16 and that would be 17 and all the way out and then this would be 33 and then all the way out and this would be 41. That logic gets us only one away which in computers instead of 30, what did I say? Six, zero to 17 to 33 to 49 is one away from 48. In computers, if you're one away, you're probably right. Like off by one errors happen all the time. Um, that was the logic I used. And then I was like, all right, well this is like one row lower as well as a bunch over. So I decided you know what, let's change statue head to be 4A and statue body to be 5A. And now we'll run that. And now the code is basically saying, look at a different spot for the tiles to draw for this sprite. Um, I realized that the calculations I just used to come up with those numbers are not helpful probably also not clear and I'm okay with that because, well, spoilers, I'll show you in a second. An error has been detected when applying sprites. All right, so it did not appreciate unknown operator. Did I typo? I typoed. I took out this. Successfully applied. Let's load it up.
Okay. Um, let me kill this guy. And then we will put it in a slower speed. And you can see that our Bowser or statue is still in the statue shape, but it's clearly our our squiggles over our spike, right? Those are the graphics that are being displayed. Um, so we would need to change things like these offsets because we're not trying to offset it in the same way. We want it his head to be on top of him. Well, maybe we would want it the same way. Let's go back to the picture of what we're trying to draw of Bowser. Ideally bigger. Um, but that's the concept. We just converted that code into using a different sprite that's in the graphics file. So, how do we do the rest of it? Well, that sent me on a journey. And I'm going to recreate the journey for you. You ready? I googled SMW ASM 460 OAM. Why did I Google that? Because the OAM table is like a thing. And that got me to, I don't, honestly, I don't even remember what OAM stands for, but it probably got me to another freaking Thomas post. This guy comes in clutch. It eventually got me to, okay, I had to go back into Firefox. I'm lucky I found it. It's definitely gonna be in one of these. Let's search for Bowser, no. Bowser. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was in this one. All right. Um, so I was looking at the OAM, which is like this big graphics thing to sort of understand the next steps. And I found this post where the other day I tried to make a 48 by 32 SMB1 Bowser. And I was like, oh snap, what are you doing? And then he showed right here, here's the ASM for those that are interested. Um, it's kind of a bummer that it now says not found. This worked for me two weeks ago when I was looking at it. And I was like, yo, let's see if there's like a, a way back machine for it. Okay. But apparently it's saved as the URL is slightly different. Instead of Big Bowser, it's this. So right here, he's got all this code. And I was like, dang, you like, you already did it for me, bro. You got all the code. And I was like, I mean, that'll be easy if I just copy his code, right? But then I looked some more. Um and saw that he finished it. Submissions. I, I missed a step and I forget exactly how I found it, but I found that this Bowser, there's a waiting section to the website. Um, I had done a search on like updated sprites. Apparently these are sprites people made and they haven't been approved yet. And this Bowser's chilling in the waiting section. Look at this bad boy. He jumps, he shoots, he throws hammers. So my plan was to make this one because it was like, how do you make a sprite? You can't just copy everything. But when given the fact that someone's already made what you wanted to make and it's way better than what you're going to do and you've already spent like a week of eight hour days figuring this stuff out. Might as well just copy, right? So we're clicking download and we're downloading another Bowser. You know how this goes, Mikey's Bowser for Pixie. Um, extract all. What kind of docs do we got? We got Bowser with Sprite page three, a PAL. So another thing I was expecting to see on other ones was a palette file, um, ASM, a CFG, and a JSON. So we know we need the JSON.
goes in here. We know we need the ASM that goes in there as well. The CFG we don't need. Um, that's just like an, an alternative to the JSON. And then the sprite page. So remember how I said you can only have four and this one's set up to use three? We now have an issue in that they both want to use three. But that's not really an issue because we can merge them. So let's open up. Well, this is currently 80. Okay, yeah. So we're, we're done with 80. Uh, we can leave leave it the way that it was and let's open up now 80 is the one we wanted let me let me go back to lunar magic what do we have in three eighty cancel so let's keep eighty here's one version let's see what their spray page three looks like by open up another y char so there's his head. His head's apparently got two animations, like a mouth open, mouth closed, his body, his body. Um, the good thing that you should be noticing here is no real overlaps. Um, so what we're going to do is just copy and paste from one into the other. We'll copy. And we'll paste. What is this? A Koopa climbing? Yeah, we don't care about that. That's part of his hand, so we do care about that. Okay. Um, I think I copied the other way when I was doing it last time. I went from from there to here. Yeah, when I was doing it last time, I copied the other way around and I forgot to move the fireballs. So the fireballs looked like broken skeleton guys, which looked cool. Um, you're going to miss seeing that because it should be right now. I now have both the sets of graphics that I want to see in one file. So we'll save this. We're not going to expand it again. Close this. Close this. Insert it with Pixie, see if we forgot anything. Did we update our list? Nope. Oh, so we need to open this in Lunar Magic now. So Lunar Magic, we will open the ROM insert our graphics because we updated them don't need to update this because we're still just using 80 in spray page 3 come here and do we have a pixie uh, we do it looks scuffed here but remember those are not connected to the graphics in the game We'll save this and run it. Well, let me just, let me run it in this because it's quicker. Like normal. So there's our Bowser, and he's angry and he's throwing stuff, and our what's it called is still there. So let's let's see what do we have to do. One, let's get rid of Bowser two because clearly we're going with the other thing. So we'll just delete Bowser 2. We don't have to update the ASM or the graphics because we're just not going to use that. We weren't using the spike anyway. So we'll delete it out of there. We will redo the ROM. We'll open Lunar Magic and delete that nonsense of a Bowser. We'll open the ROM. Delete that. It doesn't exist anymore. 
but regular Bowser should still exist. F3. Okay. And saved the ROM. Then we can load it in the speedy one. Which I'll... What do we say? Bowser is black. Um, don't know why he's in blackface, but that is a palette issue. The statue looked right until it just disappeared, which is kind of a concern. But at least we got it looking right again. Um, the Bowser movements look fabulous. So our options are we can fix the palette, which I hate colors, so we're not doing that. We can fix the Bowser statue, but we got a new Bowser to play with, so I'm not doing that. And we can shove our second Bowser on top of Bowser, which obviously is what we do next because that would be very satisfying to see. So let's open up the code that was provided with this Bowser and see what we see. Bunch of variables, important stuff. I appreciate that kind of comment. Um, this is saying, remember I said there's like random variables you can use for storage. They're like defining their random variables. Not only telling you what they are, but then the code is gonna use this too. So that's super useful. Um, scrolling through the rest of the code, hammer time, I like the names. It's just a, a whole bunch of good stuff, honestly. And very short, 400 lines. Only 100 on more graphics. I, I mentioned that before in the other code, the sub horizontal position. This is when I Googled it and found out what that, 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 that does. But long story short is um, this works. We're just gonna immediately do this. But this is actually 15, 7C. And that makes him face the same way because the Super Bowser also does it. And that's how it does it. Just chills right at the start. Um, then we're going to address why this Bowser disappeared when I added a third Bowser. To me, that made zero sense. Um right the the existence of a third bowser shouldn't matter unless that table's getting reordered and it's not so i was driving myself crazy looking at this code again and again and again and eventually did get it working with let's open up a new window again to compare clear carry says like set all those invisible flags be zero. Rep 20, so I, I skimmed over it. What it does is say, treat variables as if they're uh, 16 bytes, bits. Reset the processor status bit. The bits of the P register are the ones in the operand. Bits of the P register zero is not affected. What does this mean? I don't know what it does. I sort of knew what it did last week and this was the issue is you need to load 14 D4 and do the XBA and load D8 and then rep 20. I don't know how the accumulator is fitting 14 D4 XBA and D8 all into itself when you still haven't repped 20, but apparently that's what you do. Um, this line to compare is essentially down here and otherwise they're the same. And there's an extra CLC. And no, it's a load, not an add. 
I don't know how I eventually decided that this was the answer, but I don't have a link in my notes saying I stole it from someone else, which usually means I figured it out myself. Um, it was incredibly annoying, but I believe I got it working with this. So we'll replace that code. I think I have to do the same thing with the X values. Um, sub horizontal position code from Pixie. We still got our hard coded index. We have functioning correct offset adjustments where we subtract 16 from the Y, add seven to the X. And is that it? So now let's run that. I know that we didn't shove the other Bowser on top yet, but it's coming, trust me. You just gotta make sure things aren't too janky and disoriented before you add more stuff is probably what I decided. Okay, so now the Bowser or the statue Bowser always faces you. Instead of switching in the middle of the screen, which I kind of liked, he does switch immediately. Let's move this over. Okay, so in the Bowser pixie code, let's go to, all right, so right at the right at the top is what I decided last time. I said, you know what? Main sprite function, before you get to do anything, let's just do my code, because I'm important like that, right? What do we want to do? We don't need to do this. We want to get position to the sun. I could position off of the statue, because the statue is positioned off the sun, but let's just make everything off the sun, right? So assuming if the sun was one lower, Bowser will be two lower. We'll do that. And then we will copy this and we'll just adjust the offsets. So instead of subtracting 16, let's subtract 30. And that's it. Let's run that. Okay, so my Y positioning was a little bit off. Bowser's kind of floating. The X position's also off. Um, but the concept is there. He's definitely love and life, really high up in the screen. His hammers, he is throwing the hammers, but they're not coming down. Um, is something I just wanted to call out. Let's see if I can get over to that pipe. When things go too far off screen, they despawn, which is what I decided immediately was happening with the hammers. Um, I verified it by moving Bowser slightly lower. You see how when he's, he's down here, his hammers are still working. Instead of making him so high above the sun, I made him below the sun and his hammers were coming out. So that's definitely the issue is that he's too tall. So they're, they're despawning. Um, let's see what the proper offsets are. Checking the code I did before. Uh, subtract 26 and add zero to the sun, surprisingly. That's what I decided was the right numbers. Yeah, that looks better. I guess. Not really when he flips around. But whatever. The next thing is let's turn off the black face before we get canceled, right? So the reason why that's working is because the palette's messed up. How do palettes work? Let's look. What do we want to look at? We want to look at Bowser statue is set to use palette of one. Bowser pixie statue is set to use palette of five. Um, those are two different numbers, which is good because they can't use the same if they have different colors. So what we need to do is update palette five to have better colors because right now they're black. 
Um, okay, changing custom sprite palette, YXPPCCT format, and how to change the sprite palette. These were all threads that I looked up. Um, I also, at this point, Googled Lunar Magic Tutorial, and I watched a five-minute video on it, which was not helpful, but that was how, like, stressed I was. I was like, why is this so complicated? Um, what I got from it was that this JSON might not be believable and that there's a bunch of stuff in the code that might actually be handling it. And that was disappointing. But I did eventually succeed because you have to succeed, right? Let's click this open palette editor. And what we see here are all of the available palettes. Um, you can think of it as like your painter's palette where one row is one palette number and you can use any of the colors on this row. So whatever one this this guy's using is one of these, one of these is one of these. Um, he's got a bunch of black, so some of these black is being put on him by, by process of elimination, right? So what I did, instead of like figuring it out, I just went, let's say, let's make this pink. And then I, is it right click? Yeah, right click is like paste. So then I went like this. And I went, hey, wait a second, that made him pink. This made him more pink. That made him completely pink. Okay, it's this row. That makes sense because these are green. This is the row that aligns with his palette. Um, let's undo that. I was really hoping that would undo. No, let's not save. So what I need to do is get the right colors in here and then he's good to go. So the download of this Bowser guy came with a, a palette file. And I tried using it in YYchar and was unsuccessful. But I'll show you what I tried just, I don't know, for fun, I guess. Make you feel good if you understand how to make it work, but I didn't. You do this. You do this, uh, palette, open, RGB palette, I don't know, to dot pal, Bowser. Like this is not helpful. You go down here and he's still got blackface and these are all black still. So like that's not what I wanted, right? I wanted colors here. And I thought you were going to give them to me because you're the palette file. So kind of confused why these are all black. But what I decided was ignore the provided palette file. Just go into Lunar Magic and add our own colors here to this row. Um, looking at I had two Bowsers to go off of as far as what color is Bowser. One was just my original picture, which says Bowser's all green and his skin's kind of yellowish. This one, which he said it was like orange, which uh, I don't know, is a questionable decision in my mind, but this is what color he's supposed to be as far as the sprite creators concerned. And this is what color he is as far as Google's concerned. So it gives us sort of the creativity to just do whatever we want, um, as far as I'm concerned. So with all three of these pictures up, let's color in our Bowser, shall we? So each of these do like different, you see how he's got like a lighter and a darker, they're all kind of different shades, tones, undercurrents. That one's apparently nothing. Oh, 
There's too much highlighting in this. Like, you don't need 10 different colors. I think that's fine. It doesn't have the texture because I only have three different colors. There are three reds, four different colors. <laughs> but I think maybe this black should be just green. Yeah, we'll just get rid of detail and end up with a better product. Yeah, I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. He looks like SMB1 Bowser, and that's what we were going for, right? He's not supposed to be cartoon SMB1 Bowser. The black around his arms I don't really like. Okay, um, Bowser's good to go. Next, let's do some CFG updates, shall we? A couple things I noticed and did not appreciate. You can't tell now, but um, you can kill Bowser with a Goomba. And the statue is janky when it moves, etc., etc. And the way we update that is updating that CFG file. So let's open CFG because when you're dealing with JSON configuration files, the answer is probably not update the JSON if there's a GUI provided. The answer is probably update it with the GUI. So that's what we're going to do, like normal people. So this is the Angry Sun, and we're just going to go through all three of these one at a time. Um, and what do we see? Don't interact with other sprites. This is why the sun goes through things. We like it. Let's just click a bunch of things. Don't turn into a coin. Mm. Let's leave it. If you touch the flag, don't kill by sliding. Take five fireballs to kill. Sure. I think that would mean it would survive more than a Goomba, right? Although I don't think you can kill, I don't remember if you can kill the sun or not. Okay, I like all this. So we're just gonna take a screenshot of this and use those settings for all of them. So we'll go in here and we'll say save. And then we will open the Pixie Bowser and make him the same. Oh, he also had take fireballs. Oh, see the statue already had don't interact with other sprites. Don't interact with layer two. That's probably what was, because um, blocks aren't sprites based on, not my definition of sprite, but the definition that Super Mario World, Luna Magic, all these people seem to use is that blocks aren't sprites somehow. Anyway, all of our CFGs are updated. Let's run Pixie to get our updates. And let us run it in the emulator. Okay, our Bowser's doing things. Let's grab that Goomba and try to kill him with the Goomba. So I put the Angry Sun one block higher than it was before. And I did that so that I could demonstrate something that I accidentally found and was so confused on. Because I did that, accidentally moved it in a different spot because I didn't think it mattered because the code sets it right away. And the result was When the sun starts, it's over on the right. All right, well, that was clearly not what I wanted to show because it didn't work. Okay, now it's one higher. 
And now the sun starts on the right side of the screen instead of the left. Now when I saw that, I was like, what did I do to make that flip? Um, and I did nothing. It's coded like that. If we go to the angry sun code, you will see this. But the very first thing it does is it loads D8, shifts right four times, compares it to one, stores that in 16 OE. What this means is it's looking for the Y position of where it was placed, seeing if it's on an odd or even number, and using that to determine if it should start on the left or the right of the screen. That is like mind blowing to me of why would you do it that way? When what you could have done is set it as a control bit in your JSON file and then just had two here, angry sun left or an angry sun right. Like how is that not a better way to do it? Anyway, um, I'm, I'm full of critiques on other people doing all of my work for me and then me complaining about it. But that is one of them that I have. <laughs> so regardless, we'll get rid of that. And otherwise everything's good, right? The only other thing we have was the off-screen hammers. Let's see how to fix that. Um, so I looked into the code. Hammer timer. If it's time to hammer, then let's try hammer. Let's see what this try hammer looks like. Only throw the hammer if it's time to throw the hammer. Throw the hammer, no reset to. Sub hammer throw, let's see sub hammer throw. Load the sprite direction. Load the hammer offset, hammer speed, call this spawn extended pixie routine. And that's it. Um, yeah, so the the Bowser statue was spawning fireball balls via that cluster sprite code. Cluster sprites are like a type of sprite. And I was expecting to see the same thing here, and I didn't. I saw spawn extended instead. So Googling spawn extended led me to Googling this phrase. I went with SMW. Prevent extended sprite despawn off screen. I spelled it right when I was Googling it. And I was like, what is this? Extended Sprite Despawn Range Fix. There's the despawn handling in the OAM of extended sprites so they can safely go off screen. And I was like, perfect. And it says, this patch requires extended no sprite tile limits patch. And I was like, all right, we'll click that. Um, we're going to download this. And we're going to download this. And we're going to just apply some patches, right? Um, do you know how to apply patches? Because I don't. Because then I went to SMW apply patch guide. And that's not what I Googled because this isn't going to be the right thing. I don't know what I Googled, but ASAR is what you need. Um this ASR tool patches it up for you. So we're gonna download that. Let's open up all of our downloaded folders. Um, I think I looked at a guide for this because I don't remember how to do it. So that means it's very likely I was just clicking along with a guide. And what the guide told me to do was, I don't know. I just click Azar. Um, clearly, just run this anyway. 
enter the patch name. So we'll just shove this in this folder. And I'll shove both of these in the Azar folder as well. Go get the ROM, shove that in that folder too. Open this back up. It's the extended one. Enter ROM, give it the ROM. Bunch of errors. One or more warnings were detected. Warnings are not errors. Deprecation notification. Sounds good. Default is yes, so we can just hit enter. Press any key to continue. We'll just assume that that means it worked. Add despawn. I don't know why it opened over there. <coughs> um, bunch more deprecation errors. All right. So at that point, I was like, I guess that worked. Um, that's not the way I would have written my program. Um, I would have given like a confirmation that it worked, not just press any key to continue, but everyone's got their own style, I suppose. Uh, I don't need to do Pixie or Lunar Magic, just that should have fixed everything, right? I assume, and therefore I will act under that assumption. All right, I still stuck him on the right, but his hammers now work. So this was like the best bug to fix out of all of it because the first thing I tried worked, um, which is just a fantastic feeling. <laughs> and now this is um, the level. One caveat oh, is you can get in that sub world. Let's see if I can make it in again. Got me. Anyway, you'll just have to trust me that the sub world works. Um, and then what happens when you go in the sub world is Bowser's not there. So let's move that one up so that it'll work next time. Um, and then the sub world, if we scroll over to it. No. Okay. Midway entrance. I forget how I figure this out because again, this is not a lunar magic guide and I hate lunar magic, but you press page up and it goes to different levels and the sub world is just a different level in the hack. I think it was 11 F. At this one yeah um, so what we want to do is just stick the Sun and a Bowser statue and a Bowser in the sub world too right uh, and then we should be Gucci so now you can't cheese it by running away into the sub world so let's run this bad boy Okay, in the sub world. And we are met by chaos. So, that's not what we wanted. Let's look here and see that, oh yeah, the sprite is per level. Um, so now this level is also going to use these sprite pages. Now everything should load correctly. Do I have to do the palette as well? Sure looks like it, right? Oh, what did I do? Oh man. 
Okay, I'm not redoing that palette nonsense, so that'll just be like a fun Easter egg. We'll just <laughs> say the Bowser in the subworld has blackface on, and hopefully that doesn't offend anyone. But, I mean, it's an underground level. Does that make it better or worse? Unsure, but saved it. Run it. In the subworld, first try. And dead. So, that's exactly what I wanted. I'm kind of disappointed because when I did that, it didn't work. And the reason why was because of the hard-coded offsets. Because there's a different number of sprites in the subworld, right? And they weren't, maybe it's because the order I put them in, I don't remember. But I had to co go back to this code right at the top and say, you know what, instead of hard coding it, we need to actually do some searching. And I replaced it in both Bowser statues. And I wanna show you at least because it's not very complex. Oh, this is this is my file. Um, set X to be zero. Load the address of this sprite index. Compare it to zero. Now, what is this? This is a specific variable. Okay, I have way too much crap open. It holds the custom sprite number. So in my list.txt file, I said the sun is number zero. Bowser's gonna be one, two, three, whatever. Um, that number actually gets inserted here because it was also there in Lunar Magic. When I was going here, you see this number? That's, that's what's stored in that address in the table. So I said, start at zero, look at the first array of that variable and see if it's got zero in it. If it does, then go to found. If it doesn't, increment X and go back to the top where it's going to loop through that table until it finds it. If it gets to the end of the table, it's just gonna keep going in memory because it doesn't know to only look at 12. So if I didn't have a uh, a sun in the level, but I did have the Bowser, that would cause some chaos. Anyway, once it finds it, now it knows that um, X is the right index. So we transfer X to Y and then reset X and then just do things as we did with Y. So it replaces this, which is hard coded with this, which is variable yet still dependent upon it being there. Um, I guess I don't need it, so I guess I won't put it in the code this time, but I mean, this is a better way to do it. We'll just leave it at that. Even better would be checking if you're out of bounds and then stopping and saying, you know what, leave his position however it is and skip all of this, um, but we don't need all that. Was I paused for all that? Hopefully that was the only time I accidentally paused. We'll find out in editing. My challenge was to teach you how to add custom sprites. I feel like I did that. Um, we got the sun from Super Mario World Central, added it, edited the code, did the same thing with the statue, did the same thing with the Bowser, messed around with the graphics a little with the Bowser, Showed you how I could have messed around with the statue's graphics. Didn't make anything new happen. Like the sun could have shot out laser beams or something, I suppose. Um, but that's sort of, when you get into the custom, I want my sprite to do this. That's gonna just be super assembly specific and not really helpful, I feel like, in a generic situation. 
the only thing left for the ROM hack, this is Super Bar World, by the way, is a credit screen. I wanna make sure Ross Nelson gets credit for making the level and the three people who made these sprites get credit for that. Oh, I also showed, I guess, a little um, change in the CFG files. Um, yeah, I don't know how to make a credit screen. I haven't done that yet. We're caught up with what I spent a week and a half, two weeks learning. I'm gonna go learn that real quick. That'll be bonus content. And it's bonus because the challenge is complete. But, I mean, the video's not over, so. Okay, let's get these credits done so that we can be finished. First thing I'm gonna do is save it, that as a backup. Then we're gonna open it up in Lunar Magic. Okay, not the copy one we open. So this is the hack, as you recall. First, I'm gonna add some stars into it so that we can get to the end of the level because we're testing out the credits. So obviously we'll need to get to the end of the level and I don't feel like dealing with Bowser as I go. Save and test that, make sure we're good to go. Oh no, they were bouncing on the star. Um, <laughs> I guess that's because I still left it with the um, variable incrementing to find the next sprite. I didn't use that code that I talked about to lock it to the sun. Um, I guess that's a good reason why. Yeah, let me let me fix the code. <laughs> the Pixie Bowser one, I did update the code for it. Um, I don't know, maybe I never saved and imported it into the thing, but we'll put it here. We'll get rid of that. Save that, save that, do the Pixie thing. Okay, better. The statue looks a little sun, a little low on the sun. I never noticed that. I'm not sure if I like that. You can jump on the, uh... Oh, you can spin jump on the statue as well. Not that they'll have the option to, because they won't be getting a star, but... Interesting. And I killed the Bowser fireballs? Bowser didn't shoot fireballs. Why did I kill some of the fireballs? Interesting. I really like the uh, hammers raining down on you. Okay, so when I press left and right, I can't go anywhere. So let's take a look at the overworld. Okay, in the overworld. This is where I start Googling and where I start hating um, Lunar Magic because it's kind of just like terrible. These are the level names, I think. So 105 should be 11, yeah. This is the intro text, which should have been obviously down more. So we'll just fix that. The boss sequence is what Google told me how you get to credits is the boss sequence levels, um, end game sequence level should be 105, question mark, because that is the level we're playing. So let's try doing that. My goal here, I'll save that, is to see these credits. I didn't touch them yet, but if we can get here, then we'll edit them and then we'll be good to go. So let's 
see if that did anything. We did not go to the credits. And we also see this event from the level on the left. So in the regular game, if you had been playing over here and beat this level, that would happen. So let's look at the overworld thing and look at event numbers. One, event view, page up. Okay, so that's the event is after one happens, all of these items change. So if we go past it, highlight them and delete them, that wouldn't happen. So after you would just stay here, but we want to actually go to the, the credit screen, right? That was the goal. And this did not work. All right, this person saying after two hours of messing with it, they had to put a big, a boss big boo in the level and then it worked. Um, so I went and I, I tried that. And I used this big boo boss. Um, obviously the graphics for him were scuffed. I tried killing him by killing him by touching the flag and that kills him but didn't do anything and then I tried just running into him with a star and that didn't do anything and then I started getting annoyed so what I think we're gonna do is change things up a bit um, I'm going to load up the base game cancel I don't want to save Okay, and then we'll look at the overall editor of this. With level numbers. So 105 is the one we were playing. So that like makes sense why the event triggers this because that's where the game is. Um, so this, now we have the overall of the original hack sort of erasing the nonsense that Ross Nelson gave me. Now I'm going to open up the hack we were working on. And I'm going to save this and override everything that he did as far as the overworld goes. Um, couple changes we're now going to make. Let's see. Events. We still want to delete all of this. And this. No. Up. I was using page up, by the way, to go to the next event. Page up and page down and then delete once you're past it. So bottom we'll delete that we'll delete that so now after you beat these two levels nothing should happen which makes it clear that that's the end of the game right um, I want to switch the numbers because my game's on the other one so I'll have to figure out how to do that what other things did we need to correct? We need to go back and change 105 to be called 11. One one. And then we'll just call 106 credits in case someone really doesn't understand what they're saying. Okay, I'm happy with that. I need to switch these labels. So what layer are levels on is the question. 
off to Google. Why is this not intuitive? It drives me crazy. Why do I have to know what layer I'm on? Just like you know what layer I'm on. Stop dicking around. Okay, like you let me select it. What does it let me do to it? Editor. Modify level tile settings. So bizarre. Why is this how this works? And how did I even find it? I'm just, okay. We want this one to be 105. It's in overworld modify level tile settings. 105. I guess I could have just turned off the event instead of deleting what the event does. Um, I don't know if up would let you go up or not, but we're going to keep it there. So this is 105, we're going to make this 106. No event, sure. And then we'll delete 104. All right, let's save it and see what happens. We have our two credits and one one available. Nice. Yoshi's house is still available. And changing it to zero did not mean <laughs> make it so it doesn't work. It said uh, make it so it's this bonus level. Um, I do want to delete that, I believe. And am I soft locked? I, I soft block myself. I soft block myself. I soft. I just, oh my gosh. I really like how Bowser keeps chucking stuff at you and it lines up so well. That might be my favorite part is just what happens after you touch the flag. Okay, we get no event and up still does not go anywhere. And then our credits. Um, now I just have to make 106 be a credit screen. Which, two ways to do it. One is I saw some assembly code that's like four lines that you can just insert and it will warp you to credits. And two is I turn it into a custom credit screen, essentially. And which one is easier? Let's look and think about that for a second. Test number one. Can I edit the credits in a convenient intuitive way okay so we go up to the top and we see main director and I delete this and I put Feanor All right, so that's pretty intuitive and easy. Um, his eight's gonna be tiny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's really gonna be too happy about that, but 
Those are the options that I got, right? Maybe these letters are a little bigger. Um... Yeah, I'm fine with that. I really only wanted to, crediting the three people I stole the sprites from is really my main goal. So I guess I'll overwrite one of these. How do they get colored letters? Oh, like that. Okay. <laughs> it only goes up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> It's missing the eight and the nine. What on earth? It's also not any bigger, right? It's the same size. Is it? No, it is bigger, but there's no eight and nine. That's awkward. An eight's sort of like a B, right? Do you think you would mind if you was Fionor B.O.P.? Because a, a P is a backwards nine. Yeah, I mean it. It doesn't look as good as a big name, but it it's clearly better if they're consistent, not Funor Bop. What? Okay. Main director is Funor. I want to just change this to be sprites. And then we're going to toss in Ross Nelson as the program director because I don't feel like changing the headings anymore because that took a while. Although to be honest, I'm like really good at this. So it doesn't take that long. Okay, credits are done. My name, not anywhere on there, just the way I wanted it. I was thinking about replacing everyone with Fionor. And I think I still might. Maybe not everyone, but like, at least the important ones, right? The Mac Groening ones. We'll put them right under Miyamoto instead of replacing it. Oh, I kind of like this idea where I just like toss them right in the middle of people. Okay. That looks good to me. We're going to save that to the ROM. Um, save credits. Yes, please. So now, again, the only thing we have left is still the first thing we had to do, which was get to the credits screen. So, let's do it with one more custom sprite. Use this level ASM code and set the end sequence event in the overworld editor to the level. Level, um, that's like on the cusp of I understand what they're talking about, but I feel like level I don't want to understand fully. So let's find something easier.
I don't understand what you do with this code, boss. Um, there's Thomas being helpful again, but do I want to learn Uber ASM tool? Not really. I'm so over this nonsense. Oh, that's what the boss boo is? We have to kill him with blocks? Okay, plan B, which I just thought of, was just spell everything out with blocks. But before I do that, um, let's try the boo thing. And what if I just give you a ton of those shells and make you just kill the boo the way you're supposed to? Also, um, boss boo. Why, why are there two of these? I sh I, you can't see it, but I just made two gold posts. <laughs> boss boo, please. Okay. Boss boo, and then breakable blocks of some sort. Blocks. Oh my gosh, what are those called? Throw blocks, no time limit. Beautiful. All right, so we'll just put like a bunch of these in the level. Okay. That's one hit. The rest of them are all dead, though. Can I just drop them on the guy's head, then? Hopefully it's only three hits, because that's all the blocks I got left. Okay. Level's ending. That's good. That means I can't get rid of the goal. Do we go to the credits? Yes. Oh, look at that. Go. Beautiful. Um, so we just need to clean that up a little bit and make the fight easier, more automatic, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, um, so the fight, the boo should like start here immediately. The rest of the level can get wrecked because we don't need you. F2? Yeah, let's throw up some walls here. There was a page on Lunar Magic that had something about like, was it this one? Somewhere you could like set the theme for the level. Where you could say, oh, this is a ghost house level. And I think that defaults in the spray pages. But I can't find it because Lunar Magic is terrible. So let me just hover over every single one of these real quick.
ghost house. Okay. I think that worked. I, uh, I already, was it this one? I already forget what button it was, but whatever one it was. Index of sprite graphics? Yeah, sure, of course. So dumb. This is not progress. Um... How did I do that? What was this? It was on Pokey. I don't remember it looking like that though. What could I have add, added that would have broken everything in the world? Let's try deleting. Are there two of them? Have there always been two of them? Oh my gosh, that's annoying. I'm happy I remembered that I do need to fix that though. Delete. It does get rid of his house, which is a shame. Now he doesn't have a house, but... Sacrifices for the greater good, you know? Okay, Valley of Bowser 1. How is it still there? Even though it doesn't look like it was there. How is it still there? It's not there. So there's no name. But if I go... Yeah, like, what is that? What the... Okay, so this clearly doesn't work the way that I think it works. Guess I'm glad I tested that. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Let's test the boo thing. <laughs> Getting distracted. Ghost house. Save. Still no Mario. Which is weird. But regardless, what we're going to do... How did I get individual ones? Oh, is this how actually? Let me let me test this. Is this what I wanted? I wanted these throw blocks instead of Did I use these? I used sprites instead of objects. Okay. I was thinking I just make the term the throw blocks like all over on little clouds so that the ghost eventually kills himself in him while Mario's stuck in a box, so it's like auto. Um, that was the goal, but if we can just make a bunch, that was the original goal, is now you have to kill it, but Mario's invisible, oh my gosh. I was thinking Mario's invisible because of something I messed up with the sprite pages, but... It's only on page screen one. <laughs> Alright, I'm changing the foreground not to be Ghost House so you don't have to wait for that animation. Oh, Mario's not invisible now. Are you kidding me? Why does it lag so long?
I don't like it. Let's go with Ghost House 2, see what that does. I made it so you can't see layer 2, and then it let me select layer 1, I think. I don't know. I don't know where Mario was walking off to when I went to the right. Because, like, clearly nothing's connected there. Maybe because there's no path like this. Okay, so that little path to connect them, fix that. I guess I was leading him into a path to nothing and then memory was getting gibberishy, I guess. So even though it looked bad on the editor, it appears to work. Mario's visible. But the blocks aren't always. But maybe it's just because I have so much junk on the screen. So let me get rid of the junk and just leave it with blocks and Mario. You can still go into it from the start though. That's interesting. If you walk past it, you can't come back, but you can still go into it from the start. I wonder where that's set. Maybe I, well, I was gonna say, maybe I just change it to Yoshi's house instead of a bonus room, so it's not a soft lock, but I don't know where it's set. No Mario. I don't really like this. At all. It's super slow. It's... I don't really care how it looks. Um... But that's what you get when you don't give requirements and the programmer does it. It's like, well, I mean, technically, like, it gets you to the credits, right? So it's sort of exactly what you wanted. Kind of wish I'd left 105 or, yeah, 105 here and just put credits over here, maybe. I don't know. How do I put Yoshi's house back? Copy 105, edit 104. Save F4. Yoshi's house is there at the start. Can't go left or right now. <laughs> Get out of that. Probably because it's not lined up with the path somehow now, I guess. Initial is left and right. Okay. So now I think it'll let you go. Start off, you go into Yoshi's house, which we don't want, but you could just go left or right anyway. So I guess going in and coming out of it doesn't count as clearing it. What is with this mismatched pipe, by the way? Well, Smells, if you make it to this part of the video, I'm very curious. I'm undecided whether I want to figure out why Mario's invisible. I 
again, really like designing this ROM hack for an audience of one, so it doesn't really matter. Pinor knows to run around and hold, run and jump. I'm sure he's gonna love trying to cheese it and uh, look for a second exit. But that doesn't get you to the credits, does it? I think the ROM hack's done, baby. We take out those stars um, and then ship it. Let's give a final review of all the credits. That has been my Lunar Magic journey. I'm not looking forward to editing this. I feel like I rushed the initial part. And there are a lot of things that I'm pretty sure I didn't say, but we'll see when I get to it if I said it or not. So I might have to add things. Um, I hope Ross Nelson appreciates being listed as the program director. It was just the next one is really the only thought I put behind it, but he, I was going to credit him as creating the ROM hack, which is like technically correct because he's created Super Bar World SMC, whatever it's called. Um, but I didn't. Anyway, long video, eh? If you want to see Fionor 809 clear it, hopefully there'll be a video on his channel of that. I'm not going to add it to this one because it's long enough. Okay. That wasn't worth getting to the end of. I just want to say a couple things at the end of the video here, just in case anyone makes it all the way through. I want to first and foremost apologize for all the times I misspoke in that video. I was going to go back and edit it. Or as I was going back and edit it, I was going to put in little corrections on the screen, but... There were like dozens of times when I said that the assembly codes were doing the wrong thing, essentially. Like one time I was looking at the documentation for STZ and I said, oh yeah, this stores zero in the accumulator. And then I clicked over to the code that showed STZ memory address and still didn't catch it. So I know assembly much better than you would imagine if you like listen to what I said uh sadly i can't show that because i didn't say it right any of the amount of time um in case you're wondering ld is load register all the ld commands populate registers all the st commands populate memory locations so you would load into the accumulator and then store into the memory anyway um i was also super like high level on all the beginning stuff it was just too long of a video. It made me really nervous for a presentation I had to do today at work because I was like, if this is how poorly I speak, I had streamer brain on so hard, that's going to be a problem, but it got canceled, so I have another week to learn. <laughs> um, anyway, I did leave out the beast nest, so I want to cover that real quick. First, controller port set to gamepad, then you had to go into settings configurations input user port one gamepad and then just map everything so you click map you click assign and then you click up on your controller i'll do that see how it changed um that's why the controller wasn't working is because it wasn't assigned to anything so I did that, and then once I figured that out, I started actually using it. Um, the time when I tried to debug, what I used was Tools Debugger. And this, <laughs> here I'm assuming that anyone who got this far knows programming. I don't know. Is that bad assumption? I was going to talk about how it's, I don't know, it's just nonsense. Um, no, that's not what I wanted to say. I don't know what I wanted to say. I, I couldn't figure out how to use the actual debugger to look at my code, essentially. I wanted to put a breakpoint into my code and get there, and I could never figure out how to do that. And I didn't spend too much time trying. But I did find useful was this sprite viewer. You could turn this on, turn on auto update, 
And now when you go into a level, oh, it's paused. Um, it shows you all of the sprites that are loaded in memory, essentially, and their locations. And I used this to debug what w or I, I was trying to figure out what were the values of the 2x and 2y coordinates that everything has. And it wasn't really useful for that, but it was useful because I could see, oh, all of a sudden now, I'm going to kill this goon before it gets me. <clears throat> um, you could see all the junk. Well, now I kind of wish I had the Goomba. When things die, though, they go down here. And I was able to see, okay, the Y coordinates of the Bowser statue, when it disappears, was going to 240. I thought it was 250. Maybe it's 240, whatever. And I decided that the game engine had recognized this went out of bounds and then set it to 240 as if it was dead. And that's really all it told me was that the game engine had said it was dead. It wasn't that it was invisible somewhere. So, I don't know, limited usefulness, but I, I did use it for that. And then I also used it for, you could set the speed, um, which was just help me do a quicker emulation speed. I set this to fastest a lot to uh, reduce load times. So, there we go. That was my adventure in Lunar Magic. Hope you enjoyed. If you did get to this part, I am curious why and how interesting you found it. I usually don't care if people find my videos interesting, um, but I, I like to say that I make them for my mom. I'm sure my mom isn't sitting through this, where are we at, two hours plus? Almost three hours into the video here, so um, let me know how you liked it, if you learned anything. If you uh, have an own, your own ROM hack, I was going to say, I'll put this in the comment in the description. That's what um, it got rejected from Super Mario World Central. So if you wanted to play this hack, you're not going to be able to download it there, but you can make it yourself. I'll leave a video or I'll leave a link to a video explaining how to make this ROM hack yourself in the description down below. Okay, bye.